This has been a long year. A year of uncertainty, struggle, pain. We've watched a virus take countless lives. People we knew, people we loved. Jobs have been lost. Businesses have shut down. And churches have been forced to close their doors. We've witnessed division on an unprecedented level. Cities filled with violence. Streets filled with protesters. And we felt the sting of racism. The deep heartache of hate. There have been times where it's been difficult to see the hand of God. But even in the darkest of moments, He has been there. Faithful. Present. Powerful. As a new year begins, we stand on a simple truth. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not grow faint. We don't know what this new year will hold, but we know that it's held by a God whose mercies are new every morning. This is where we place our trust. This is the truth on which we stand. This is our hope for the new year. for your support during 2020. And we're looking forward to see what God has in store for us in 2021. We're excited to worship, but before we do, let's open in prayer. Lord Jesus, we honor you. And Lord, we know that 2020 was a difficult year for all of us. But with the new year, it turns a new page. We're excited to see what you have in store for the Cornerstone community and our families. Lord, we honor you. And we want to start off by dedicating this year to you, for you to take control. God, we trust you and we honor you in all things. We give you the praise and glory in the most precious name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's start off this year with praise to our God as we sing, Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble?
mighty river through the nations, and young and old will turn to
Happy New Year, Cornerstone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our first service of 2021. I hope you and your family had a wonderful holiday season, and I'm so excited to see what God has in store for all of us this year. Before we get into the Word, let's open in prayer. Lord Jesus, we know, God, that there is no other explanation of how we got through 2020 except by your divine hand and by your divine grace. Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude. You've sustained us. You've protected us. You've provided for us. And God, we are so grateful for all that you've done in our lives. And we look ahead for what you're about to do in this year, 2021. We know, Lord, that we need to fix our eyes on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we need to trust you every single step of the way. Lord, we honor you and we give you all the glory and praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Look, I don't know about you, but New Year's didn't feel quite the same way this year. With everything going on and the hardships of 2020, honestly, it feels good to see 2020 come to a close. But if you're like me, it feels like we're still stuck in a bad dream. You know, my nephew LJ said to me on New Year's Eve, he said, so when New Year's hits and it becomes 2021, everything is reset, right? We smiled and we said, yeah, we wish. We wish we could hit that reset button. We wish we could hit control, alt, delete and shut down everything and have a fresh start. You know, celebrating New Year's actually only celebrates the passage of time, just turning the calendar over. We make a huge deal out of it because it signals the end of an old era and hopefully the start of a new one. We all would like last year's problems and heartaches and struggles. We wish that would all vanish and become a faded memory. We hope for a new start to all of our circumstances. Now we know that our surrounding circumstances is beyond our control. But God doesn't want you to focus on that. He doesn't want you to worry or focus on the things that you cannot control. He wants you to focus on Him. I'm sure there were times where you felt like 2020 was a long journey in the wilderness. I know I did. It's 2021 and it feels like we're not even close to being out of the woods yet. It must have been the same way for the Israelites as they stood with Joshua looking forward to a new era ahead of them. They had wandered for 40 years in the desert. Can you imagine that? We had one tough year and we're complaining. Well, try 40, 40 years in the wilderness. They journeyed and finally they could see the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land. Better yet, even more than that, they had God's promises that He would never leave them nor forsake them. Do we always see the promised land physically? No. But God wants us to see with eyes of faith. To know that what He has promised is faithful and true. Because He is faithful and true. In Joshua 1.9, our scripture today, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. 
Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Every step of the way, the Lord will be with you. I have entitled our message for the first Sunday of the year, Courage for the Days Ahead. As we stand with our back to the old year and look forward to this new one, we can have hope in the promises of God, regardless of what we will face. I'm not going to tell you that everything you see around you will suddenly get better. I'm not going to tell you that there won't be any hardships or challenges. I'm not going to tell you that, because that would be irresponsible of me as a speaker of God's truth. Listen, we all know that life is not easy. And as Christians, we are not exempt from hardship. Life is hard any way you slice it. But listen, life is hard, but God is good. The difference for those who trust in God is this. When we put our trust in God, we don't have to give in to fear. For those who trust in God, we know that God is our ultimate hope. That salvation and victory belongs to Him. That He works all things together for good for those who trust Him and obey Him and walk according to His will. We must cease striving on our own and trust God. That God will provide what He thinks is best and the time He chooses it to make it available. But this kind of trusting doesn't come naturally. It's a spiritual battle of the will in which we must choose to exercise faith. You know, faith says, I trust you even though I don't understand. I trust you even though I cannot see. I trust you even though it is hard. Let your life reflect the faith you have in God. Fear nothing and pray about everything. Be strong. Trust God's word and trust the process. Look, we will certainly both face trying and joyful times ahead. But as it says in Joshua 1.5, you can rest assured that He will never leave you nor forsake you. And just as God reassured us in Joshua 1.9, our passage today, He says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. He's telling us, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He's reminding us. He's emphasizing it to us. Don't be terrified. Have I not commanded you that? Continue to be strong, child. Continue to be courageous, child. Because I'm going to be with you, says the Lord. I'll be with you wherever you go, wherever you go, whatever you face, whatever situations or circumstances that come your way, Jesus says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, and I will be with you every step of the way. I want to close our first message of the year with this. There was a young girl unaccustomed to traveling who was taking her first train ride with her family through the countryside. And it happened that in that course of the day, the train would have to cross two rivers and several wide streams. The water she could see in advance would cause doubts and fears in her. And she did not understand how it could be safely crossed with the train. As they drew near to the first river, however, she saw the bridge which made a way over. Two or three times the experience was repeated, and finally the young girl leaned back with a long breath of relief and trust. She looked up to her mom and dad and said, Somebody has put bridges for us all the way, she said with confidence. You know, brethren, that is life. We fear so many evils, we fear so many troubles, And we look at the road ahead. We see the difficulties. We see the challenges that loom before us. But as we advance, we find out that there is a way through them. That God 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has built bridges for us all the way. For He is the ultimate bridge. For He is our Lord and our Savior. And we do not have to fear. We don't have to be terrified. But we could be bold and courageous and confident to know that our God will be with us everywhere we go. Wherever we go, He will be with us. Whatever we face, He will be with us. I want you to take that to heart, brethren. And as we kick off this new year, know that He is always with us. That He will never leave us nor forsake us. And that gives us courage for the days ahead. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word of encouragement this morning as we kick off this new year. Lord, we pray for courage and strength and a bigger faith to trust you, God. We know that you're in control. But in our humanity, there's times that we have to be reminded, oh God, and forgive us of that. Forgive us that we are weak at times. Forgive us that we doubt sometimes when we know that we shouldn't. For we serve the Almighty God, who is our Savior and our Father. A Father who knows what's best for His children. A Father who will protect His children. A Father who will provide for His children. A Father who will lead us hand in hand every step of the way. Lord, we honor you, God. And we thank you for your reassurance this morning. And I pray for all of my brethren, this church community, that you continue to strengthen them. Give them a passion and a hunger for your word and your presence. Lord, we pursue you with a holy passion in this 2021. We give you all the glory and all the praise in the most loving name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. I hope you were blessed and encouraged.